Thank you. So we're still waiting on a fair number of the Intel folks. Andy, is there anything going on that would impact that? Um, I don't know any specifics. I think there's there's always you know there's always something demos and meetings and things, but yeah, I don't know anything specific. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and get it started and it may be a short meeting. I'm, it, it occurred to me that maybe we would want to cut back to every other week, but I'm afraid that if we do that, we'll lose our slot to other meetings. Um, what I would propose instead that is that we keep the weekly cadence and just accept that sometimes they may get that either be short or get canceled. Um, if there's not enough critical mass slash agenda. Oh, now we got shot. Actually, Larry, I think that we might need to look at adjusting the meeting so that Christian can attend. I think that um, he's increasingly um, kind of ramping up activities here, you know, from Intel Labs. And uh, but I think he's got a permanent conflict with this time slot, if I recall. Right. I, w I was going to to uh, talk to him and see if we could find another time. I don't know. I mean, we're it's going to be complicated, obviously, but we should try to do that. All right, so let's yeah. let's let's do what we can today. Um, I started just added the the one bullet I could speak to, but if uh, others go ahead and add your um, there, I'll give you placeholders. Um, Unramp is coming along. It's it's coming together very nicely. A uh, lot of hard work. Uh, by Bilal at, uh, at Purdue, and it's I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Um, we're working in a in GitLab and his 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 uh, repositories right now. But next week I'm going to spend at Purdue and uh, kind of wrap things up, or not finish it, but uh, sort of transition it, move it into the ONF GitHub repositories. Um, the documentation is completely a mess and in progress, but it is starting to come together. I've just given you a link there if you want to go look at it with the caveat that it's still very much in draft format and changing uh, constantly. Um, yeah, other than that, um, not sure what else to say about it. It we're we're able to like I've talked about before the I think one of the big features that we're, is that we're able to scale up um, the core and um, GNB sim independently um, yeah across, across multiple nodes so it is a natural cluster any questions about that or should we move on Well, I don't know if this is on specific, but um, 
So what about the um, getting the starter kits out to the uh, universities? I, I would, yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you were back this week. I would, I would send those starter kits ASAP. Um, uh, so I guess I was looking for, you know, and sorry if I dropped the ball somewhere, I'm not sure, but, you know, we kind of wrote up what they are, but to get the universities to agree and, and, uh, and, uh, indicate they're going to pay or, you know, or get that payment kind of process started. Um, and normally that would be kind of the first step before getting them shipped. And I don't know if that's been proceeding or where that stands right now. Yeah, I was, I was waiting. For, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I knew you were on PTO a fair amount of time, so I didn't press anything, but I, I wanted to get your approval on the last version of that starter kit document, and then I'll send it to them. Oh, yeah, I think it looked fine actually okay. last I saw. Yeah, let's let's not use that as the or, you know. All right, I'll go ahead and, and do that. Um, yeah, and all, okay. we, and all that we wanted to ship were the um, the uh, the genome bees, right? There's nothing else to ship. That's, that's nothing else to ship right now. Yeah, and we also need the shipping addresses. I mean, I think if I can get all that by um, Thursday morning, I could get them shipped Thursday. Otherwise, then I'm going to be away for two weeks, and they're not going to go out. Ah, okay. I will. Uh, I will get on that right after the call. Okay. Yeah, I, I, seed universities is maybe not the right word. I know. Let's let's use the, the modern term to the influencers. Um. Okay. Rock. Sean? Hey, Larry. Yeah, so this um, this past week, I, I didn't uh, make the progress that I wanted to uh, on any of those issues below. Um, in fact, uh, I got, uh, my time got taken away by um, Christian's uh, group. Um, they are doing a modification of of either a rock for either in a box, but they're doing it on their own bark. And um, I've been helping them with that, but uh, yeah, I didn't make any progress on the issues below. And I believe their uh, work on this is uh, leading up to a demo on August 1st, uh, as far as I know. Or the, the start of August, at least. So th this would be a demo for their funding agent. Is that what they're working towards? Yeah, it's a project called NIWC, I think. Maybe that's not public knowledge. Oh, OK. Got it. I won't be yeah, expecting demo in, in early August. Yeah. Let's leave it at that. OK. So Does that work that we expect would come back into open source? Um, at the moment, uh, the reason they forked uh, time on is uh, they have uh, they have confidentiality concerns over us. I think the objective is that they would contribute it back to the open source, but for the moment, they made a fork uh, on an Intel internal repo, uh, which was really awkward because you know that code was never put in a private repo before, and it created all sorts of build problems. Interesting. Okay. The objective is that they would contribute it back. Well, yeah. So it's it sounds like they're making API changes. Yeah. All right. So those we would that API changes we would we would want to see a proposal. Um. So it's not just you know fixing bugs and adding features. It's changing the API. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it probably is something that would. Uh, require a branch if it was to be in the open source project. Okay, and I'm guessing maybe you can't say any more about what that is. Yeah, I mean, um, well, really, they're, they're API changes, they're changes in the rock models, um, you know, so, I mean, they might be adding an attribute here or, you know, uh, yeah, mainly adding attributes to the rock model, but, I mean, they're not something that's are useful generally to the community, I think. And, and I think that's the reason for keeping them in a branch, um, you know, the, in, in the longer term. 
um, you know, they might be useful. Uh, might be useful to some people, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think uh, we shouldn't just allow any any old thing at all to be modified in the rock models. Yeah, yeah. Is this, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm zooming out to 30,000 feet. You know, I mean, if if others over time are going to need to do the same kind of extend the APIs to do certain kinds of things, and if they're going to feel the need to do it, you know, privately, or as you said, you know, we shouldn't just accommodate any kind of API changes um, easily, that seems like it could lead towards a tendency to fork versus yeah. a system that allowed for the user specified attributes or you know an extensible system so you didn't sort of have to fork off but you could augment in a graceful way with new capabilities am i making any sense yeah no. not an I octal. sorry yeah. go ahead larry no no go ahead yeah well i was, I was just going to say yeah, I mean, I can see how it's, it could be a common enough use case. Uh, it's a it's a big effort at the moment uh, to to do it, and you know, really, um, uh, the the work is uh, is in you know the GUI is not uh, uh, not automatically generated. There are you know certain tooling and stuff like that that we don't have full documentation for. Um, yeah, it's not uh, it's not something it's not a scenario that's really well supported at the moment. And um, and like you say, there are a number of different scenarios here. There's one, you know, somebody wants to do this and they want to have it as a public project. Another one is they want to do it and have it as a private project. Um, you know and other scenarios are they want it, you know, long term, or maybe it's just an experiment. Um, you know, in 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 either case, uh, I think there's a separate sort of um, workflow for each one, and I don't think we have a clear documentation on any one of those uh, scenarios at the moment. And and it's you know it's it's. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing writing a document on it, but it's another thing proving that document is correct. You know, that's that's where the real work comes in is um, is verifying us in in those scenarios. Yeah, I I think, time and I I agree that it would be good to do that, and but I think and and ultimately that would be Ether's most likely value, is that it's a place that the community can define what it wants its API to be. Uh, that then becomes an, a, a heavyweight discussion point and debated and um, process becomes an important part of that, I think. I, I don't know that I, I jokingly referred to we want to add the iOctal, which is the escape hatch to do whatever you want. Um, that's no more appealing in the long term than having forks. It, you just get a, an explosion of optional um, attributes. So what you really want to do is 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 have a place that you can talk, you can demonstrate value in changing the API on behalf, you know, in a common way. Yeah, so I mean, I guess the difference is whether Rock is kind of um, in our is is a place where the community comes together and agrees on a common API, and uh, and and that is sort of the anchor. Or if Rock is a vehicle to pass API attributes, and it's more the components that run around Rock that are kind of you know, so like components could you know it, uh, add a couple of extra attributes and if like two components were to agree on those attributes they could continue to run on the same common core but um uh you know extend uh, extend for uh, additional capabilities that they require well i mean in some sense rock is, is exactly the mechanism you want this has always been its value it's the mechanism you want for changing the api and trying new things and demonstrating value because all you quote unquote, all you have to do is change the model. Now, keeping pace with the GUI is a problem 
And of course, keeping pace with the documentation is a problem. Um, but Rock is purposely designed to be quite pliable in experimenting with the API. Um, it is the language for expressing the API, maybe. But I, 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 that's sort of my point is that's a orthogonal to the issue of then coming to agreement as to what actually goes in does not go in the API. Because there will always be mechanisms to work around the API and extend it in private ways. And I don't know, I mean, you can you can own that escape hatch, but that doesn't mitigate the challenges of everyone using it. Yeah. But but none of that matters if no one views the rock models as the authoritative definition. I mean, you have to have the um, you know the center of mass in some sense of the project there. If you just view rock as well, I, all I really cared about was making adding this feature to the core. Yeah, as a little side exercise, I'll go ahead and change the API so I can demo it then the rock never became the center of mass or the API never became the center of, of uh, mass for the project. And you, it's always just a little side supplement thing you did, mm -hmm. which is where one could argue we are now. And I, I would really like to see it become the um, place you go change, you know, experiment and propose the API. Yeah, well, this whole question is coming up because uh, you know Christian's team doing a fork, you know, and whatnot. So I think really probably a good discussion to have, and it would be good if, if Christian and team were here as well. And um, and so maybe we should just use this as a vehicle and make sure this is getting discussed. And you know, there's some kind of strat, you know, strategy is selected out of this rather than just um, you know happenstance or chaos, right? I guess I don't know if it's happenstance or chaos, but it's forking, you know, is, is the main thing, you know, it's, as soon as I hear about, uh, you know, a fork, uh, the hairs in the back of my neck go up, right? Well, yeah, but, but, but the hairs in the back of my neck go up when I hear extensions. I mean, it, it, it leads to the same place. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean... Oh, de definitely. I think the I, I would have more of a problem with the ioctal approach, Larry, than than even the fork. I mean, rock is meant to be very uh, specific and a, a tight uh, definition of fields to you know to help the user in the greatest possible way. You know, and leaving a field open to say well you can put any old byte array into this thing and, and it'll do the magic is you know something that makes the hair stand up in the back of my neck <laughs> now maybe maybe i have under maybe i have applied the wrong mechanistic counter example here i mean but i think it's still in you still up in the same place if you have an explicit extent Option, yeah, well, I think there's a, it's, it's really a third. It's a third option, right? I, I think the extensions is a, is a third option. I yeah. mean, you know, the the models the models are extensible. You know, you can uh, like for instance, if there's a if there's a, um, a consensus in the uh, community that look this uh, this you know extension is valuable and uh, and and is worthwhile. Um, you know, we can put in these optional attributes and, you know, as I think if they have a a, a, a strong, well-defined meaning, um, people realize they're optional and uh, they can, you know, know when to set them and leave them out. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas I think ioctal is just putting in an attribute that can take anything. And I think something like that, that can take anything means nothing and and that's kind of uh to me uh what would kind of raise red flags for me yeah yeah all right so that's that's a little bit more problematic than my the problem i was pointing to was less was more about the they all come with a risk of divergence hmm. yeah 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 that, that's true okay i think i i, I agree with the, the meta point that 
time and raised here, which is this is a, I mean, both a problem and I think it's a real opportunity if we could attract interest around this topic. Um, that would be a good thing for Ether. Yeah, actually, let me put that. Okay, QA. Yep. Uh, so uh, regarding SD core release one dot three test, uh, we have tested uh, six out of eight features. Um, we are blocked on one feature, uh, uh, which is test MZ support uh, due to um, Ether three six seven two. The um, the issue was related to GNB sim uh, was not supporting uh, any other um, P elements. So. Uh, we are expecting a fix around that. I'm sorry, what, what was 3672? Uh, the bug is related to GNB SIM uh, is not able to... Um, oh, I, I see I see it down below, testing PLM. Yeah, PLM. Yeah. Right, right. So it, it only supports 20893 um, as a PLM, but we are, uh, we need some different P elements to test uh, uh, these scenarios, uh, which are related to testing the support. Well, I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a limitation, but I don't understand. Yeah, technically it's a limitation. I don't see where, why we really care all that much. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I mean, this uh, feature test MZ support is around um, changing the PLMNs uh, and having. Um, oh, some I'm sorry. You, this is with zero, your, zero. What yeah. you're testing is the ability to change the PLMN runtime. Right, right, right. Why would you change the PLMN runtime for the simulator? Or you're saying the simulator doesn't allow you to test it, that change? I mean, yes. I, never mind. I'm I'm going off the rails here. It, um, yeah, it does not allow to change it to any of the P elements. So only two zero eight ninety three is uh, allowed in uh, GNB SIM as of now. Is there? Has anyone said anything about addressing this bug? We are yet to hear from anyone. Yeah, I, so I, maybe my what my reaction here really is, is I wouldn't see them viewing this as a terribly high priority thing from a GNB SIM point of view. Mm -hmm. um, it's trying to simulate a whole bunch of other stuff. Being able to runtime change the PLMN is like, would be an extremely obscure feature for it to support. Got it. Right. Uh, so yes, I understand, Larry. Uh, so by blocking, uh, the team actually means that uh, the the particular feature is blocked. However, we as a team ha is not really blocked. The, the team has moved ahead and has been, uh, you know, trying to uh, test the other features uh, here. So right mm -hmm. now we are working on the interoperable uh, testing, interoperability stability stability between AMF and SMF. And at the same time, we are also looking into the um, the notification and ca cache and notification of the NRFs. So okay. yeah, so yeah, so that that is that that is what we are working on right now. Uh, however, as far as this feature is concerned, this is what uh, you know this was blocking. But as, as you rightly said, this is not uh, really a blocker for that. So we would just execute the rest of the test cases, or we would just mark the rest of the cases as to be not applicable uh, here, and then we'll, we'll complete that feature. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So right. what is the release plan for SD Core 1.3? It's released. 
So I guess we're in the middle of testing. I mean, I guess calling, you know, doing this, we're doing QA on, on 1.3. Normally I would think we'd be do, doing QA on 1.4 or whatever is coming and, you know, with some features and fixes that are coming in. So, um, you know, are we continuing to test, you know, truly what, what's tagged is 1.3 or are we continuing to test what's um, in master, you know, at the head of the tree? Well, well, this is this is all about testing 1.3. I mean, uh, the SD core ran it through whatever tests they have and were satisfied that the features were good. Um, this is a post facto incorporation of that into the QA, I guess, is the way to interpret it. And in some ways, preparing QA for the next release, 1.4 or something. But I guess QA has regression. At least you don't lose what you had in 1.3. Right. But, uh, and again, I haven't, you know, sorry, I've, I've been away a little bit. And, um, but this is why I've been confused because I know that, or I had recalled that 1.3 was released. I also recall at this point that there are probably at least five or six fixes that have occurred as a result of this 1.3 testing. Is that true? There were fixes that came out of the Purdue effort. They want, they were testing some things and just trying to get everything to work. I mean, they weren't set out to do QA, but in just trying to get what they thought should work, mm -hmm. work they ran across several things that went back to AJ. I don't know if there's any many bugs uncovered through this or not. Um, right, so uh, we have been filing the bugs uh, about the issues that we, we've, uh, we've came across and uh, as a result of the fix, I believe there have been, yes, as the diamond rightly said, there have been very less fixes uh, that, are, that, that were done that year. Uh, in fact, close to none. The only important fix that we've got so far uh, was for the Kajit, and it was from Sean. Uh, it was related to the PV volume fixes. Apart from that, uh, everything else we are just uh, we, we are reporting into into Jira. Yeah, so things are going into Jira, but they're not getting necessarily fixed. Yes, yes. and. Um... Let's see. Actually, I see Badri on the call as well. So, you know, is there is there a plan for another, you know, release target? Is there a 1.4 or 1.3.1? Is that something we should be talking about? Um, currently, I I mean, I haven't uh, heard something like that with Ajay. At least we haven't discussed it yet. Um, but I think we can do a, probably a bug scrub. Uh, I can throw it go around it with Ajay and probably give an answer. Um, could you add the link for this bug list in either just um, on the chat or on this page? I think I've seen yeah. Ajay raise two pull requests at least on one on the SMF for one of the crashes, and I see that up for review. Probably once that's merged, that might solve some of the uh, one of the bugs. So I can you can probably map it on what he's planning, he's working on, and then we can give a better idea of when we can give the next release. All right, so I don't, I mean, why well, I pushed just the uh, the open gear issues. But, uh... Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. So what those are from the chat. Oh, okay, sure. So, so let if you view this as um, just getting us back up to parity in some sense, that there is now a an automated QA testing apparatus that tests the important features of 1.3. Um, that can become part of a nightly build as we move ahead with 1.4 and what whatever follows mm -hmm. yeah, yes yes that's that's correct the only thing is that uh, right now that automation code is not really pushed into the ONF repositories because uh, DAF has asked us not to do uh, he has been working on some rearranging and related stuff so however the code is checked into, into some other branch uh, 
uh, some some other repository. Once DAF gave us a green signal on that, we will check in the entire automated code uh, automations into the particular branch, and then we can create or craft the particular jobs out of it, and then can then it can be part of the fine uh, nightly bit. It looks like DAF isn't here. Does it? You know, I'm not familiar with what's causing this. Is anybody else familiar with what's um, causing the the hold? Well, I would just speculate that he he knows we're multiple generations behind on several tools, and is trying to bring those along. And no sense checking stuff in and having yet more dependency on him getting those fixed. That would be my guess. So I, I, I think it's important to keep our eye on, on the end goal here, which is we want the ONF QA machinery, which includes both automatically triggered tests that happen every time you try to check, you try to do a commit, and nightly builds, which are a broader, more expensive, time-consuming integration test, are part of everybody's... Um, continuous integration pipeline stream. So every time in, you know, Audrey checks something in, it goes through this very same set of tests and, and we of course can continue to add to it. And I would add the same goes for uh, the rock. It should not be the case that either AJ or Audrey on the core case or Sean on the rock case have their own private set of tests they run uh, that they use to convince themselves it's perfectly fine that they have those tests, but those all need to be incorporated in what gets uh, officially run against every check-in and every you know nightly build and so on. That sounds right to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess we don't have that for Rock either at this point. Sean, is that is that from your point of view a fair statement? Uh, sorry, Larry, I missed the, the question. Well, you you have tests that are that you run rock through that are not part of the either the commit tests uh, setup or the nightly build. Um, mm, not really. I mean, there everything I do is is really in either in a box. You know, the whole loading up of, you know value or the mega patch uh, really that's as far as i go larry i don't have a set of tests separately well well are those tests run nightly then against rock hmm, i don't know yeah I, I wasn't necessarily saying that you had this fabulous portfolio of tests it would be great if you did but i understand that your tests are fairly limited but do we even run those um i i think they were set up but i don't know if if they run, uh, I don't know who owns those nightly tests anymore. Is that Canal? Yeah, yeah I mean, that, I... yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe nightly test is not owned by Canal. Sorry, I missed that, Sagar. Yeah, what I mean is the nightly build and the nightly build and the nightly tests are not currently owned by Kunal. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, this is good. I think we probably have just identified a gap, right? You know, no, nobody is assuming ownership for the commit tests or nightly build tests, and uh, we, uh, this group, really should think about that. I mean, I think that um, you know, I suppose in my mind, I was imagining that um, you know that the Pune QA team would own the nightly build tests and that or that set up, but um... we can do that. We can do that uh, but definitely. But right now, uh, it is not uh, something that we that we do. Uh, that that's what my uh, I was saying. Yeah, yeah no, I, would, I understand. I would definitely like to put that on the on the on the to do list because mm -hmm. that having a credible continuous integration pipeline mm -hmm. that's generating all of these artifacts we're releasing um, is the goal. Sure. 
Sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll connect with uh, DAF and uh, try to get all those information. Yeah, and and it, it it there's multiple threads to this. One is having legitimate tests, and of course the testing harness for them to run in. But the other half of it is having Jenkins updated and everything that DAF is working on. So yeah. those two threads need to come together. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. And 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 I think the emphasis here probably is on the nightly build over the check ins that happen. Those have been happening. Uh, every time you try to do a commit, it's a very modest set of tests. It's, um, mm -hmm. and I don't know that we want to beef those out necessarily, but it's the not, what we used to call the nightly build, um, the nightly build on the QA pod. We just need that to be automated and nightly. Okay. Okay. Um, is there more on the QA front? All right, so you have the GNODE B, it, the configurations in progress. Have you, is there any more to say about that? Uh, no, nothing much. Uh, so we've received the GNODE B and the GNODE B and uh, we, yesterday only we, we've uh, fired, fired those things up. Uh, we've, so we've seen that the GNODE B is up. Uh, we are trying to, uh, uh, attach a phone to that and then trying to see uh, how, it, how it functions. And once we do that, we'll be doing the same thing for the GNOD. Uh, right now, I'm struggling to find if we have the 5G SIMs uh, for the GNOD B, but uh, I hope we may get some things on, on that. Hey, you know, something I'd like to just mention here is that, um, you know, I did see some news that Apple in iOS 17 is adding features for private 5G to allow an iPhone to, say, prioritize data service over, you know, local private 4G, 5G network, um, you know, and some other things that should, in theory, be good for us, good for Ether, and maybe even good for our QA process. Has anybody else looked into that to any extent or heard about this? Larry? Well, I, only from you. I haven't learned anything more, but from what you pointed me at. So let's see if we could find that URL. All right, make, oh, you put that URL in the... Um, in the startup kit, yeah, I did. Doc, right, yeah, so we can yeah. find it. Your... I think that um, it would be great for us. To, I mean, I think it would be really. I mean, identifying UE devices has been, a, a, you know, a bit tedious in the past and whatnot. Too, if that becomes smoother, or if we could use iPhones, you know, which I think tend to be somewhat ubiquitous now, you know, um, I, I think that would be a really good thing. So, uh, as you know, Sagar, as you're looking at, you know, connecting phones and whatnot, to, yeah. Um, I guess I'd encourage us to to try an iPhone if we can, as soon as we can. Sure. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll try to Google this uh, the stuff as well. The one that you mentioned. It would probably have some uh, dependency on what is the uh, if we are using a real radio on the CBRS band. Is that would that be a dependency that we have or and then 5G would that not be a case? I don't know if it would require CBRS band or not. I mean, I'll post, you know, what I found. I guess it was a light reading article. I just, I just stuck mm -hmm. it in here. It's okay. like, a... so you know, this is it, and uh, I don't. Know that it has to be on CBRS, but the two uh, radios that uh, the GS Lab team has are CBRS band radios anyway. Um, okay. <clears throat> so they should, I mean, if you know, if this thing's now, the biggest question is, is this available now? Something we could download now or load, or is it some kind of beta or, you know, forward looking announcement? Um, but yeah. as soon as we can get an iPhone running, we should, in theory, 
you know basically what as i understand it basically all the all the knobs and you know and buttons necessary to configure it to run on private 5g should now just be available under settings in the, under the iphone yeah yeah So I, I presume that the, the real value there is that you can go in and out of private 5G. I mean, it's, it's not hard to, to configure any phone that has CBRS support to use Ether instead of Verizon. Well, there are two things, Larry. So, uh, the, well, the first is that um, you know, today, uh, you know, devices prioritize Wi-Fi over using 5G because they presume Wi-Fi is free. And so you have to like go manually turn off Wi-Fi right. to use data service. And so it's it's really clunky, you know. Um, but then too, we've had a lot of difficulty getting whatever SIMs or getting iPhones to attach properly. And so we've only been able to attach um, Android devices as I understand it. That's all I know of, yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, if, if this new release solves those two problems, that would be a big step forward to just be able to get an iPhone to attach properly, but to be able to really set it up so that you could Practically speaking, have it to kind of roam and prioritize using the local data services when you're, you know, on prem and when you when you leave, it does the right thing. It uses Wi-Fi elsewhere and and uh, cellular as appropriate. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Okay, um, there's the link. Everyone, take a look. SD core. Um, yeah, I think I probably I did my task on updates. I think he was adding some fixes. Okay, are you? Yeah, I just tried to reach back to me. So mostly, I was working with the, or I'm working with the Bilal and the other four units before. Uh, and we, we are trying to make this multiple. Uh, instances of AMF and SMF was uh, stable, right? We, I have read the fixes for the SCTPLB, AMF, and SMF. So, yeah, and lately, yesterday night, I think like Bilal has given me some more issues. She seems like not working well. Right. So, yeah, I mean, all, all these issues are around the multi instance, and we were trying to scale up the number of UEs and transaction rates. And we do see some of the risk conditions coming. <clears throat> when looking at that, I also see like there was one of the defect open by well, the Vivas, I guess. Yeah, we were just trying to give them the config what is required to enable multiple AMF instances. Most likely, it's not enabled for it. Yeah, so this is this is so that that multiple instances and related to the NRF one. So that is what something that we found out, and then we were just trying to debug that. Uh, was wanted to really get to the exact scenario where it is it might be happening, but uh, I believe uh, yeah, there's some some work, uh, some other work combinations, and maybe uh, your. You, your fixes or your help may be needed there. Yeah, I just up, yeah, I, I just updated the all the required config in the um, ticket, whatever was the base oh. uh, what is the ticket number. Okay. Uh, it's sure. ether three six seven six. I have just provided all the required config. Uh, if you enable the all those four four areas of the config, mm -hmm. uh, it should see like multiple AMF and multiple SMF should work. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, and you okay. may hit some issues which are already raised by you know, Bilal and other people. The only thing uh, is those issues are not part of Ether board, Ether Jira board. Oh, uh, as soon so, as those, those code gets merged, it will be uh, available to everyone. I will be able to merge the head charts. But, but if you just want to get started with the multiple instances, it should work. Because we right. did see these issues uh, because uh, we were trying a lot more complex test cases. Mm -hmm. It was not very less effective. Yeah. Right, right. I, I understand. And, and thank you for that. Is there a way I, I can get get hold of the list uh, that Bilal uh, has talked about? 
because uh, otherwise you know we will not be really sure whether this issue is already considered reported it may end up into duplicate filing the issues into jira and may end up into duplicate bugs so other so the other alternative would be to file all those issues reported by bilal into jira itself um, yeah i mean it, it's a challenge right how do we uh, uh, encourage community members to come and open the jira Like we watch uh, chatting with you on the Slack, and but I I have the list of fixes. So based on the fixes, I can uh, add into this meeting notes in next few minutes. That what will that be fixed in corresponding pull request? So that works. Right? So maybe you can avoid those number of issues, and uh, as soon as that code is approved, uh, maybe those images will be available. Does that work? Yeah, I mean, anything that we know of that you know that that points us to what was the issue that that should help mm -hmm. us. Yeah. <clears throat> in, anything else? Harry, I will not add. No, that I I will add this in the next few minutes. I'm just opening up the. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Um, SD ran. I. Suspect time and you added this one. Yeah, good guess. I did. Um, so just, uh, I guess, first of all, an observation that you know we don't really talk about SDRAN here, and we've never really agreed that this is the place to be talking about SDRAN. We <laughs> have agreed that this is the place for Ether and Rock and SD Core so far. Um, that I do see um, a desire. Um, I believe, you know, from the Intel lab side, from Christian and Pranav and whatnot, to um, to you know, kind of consider SD RAN in scope overall um, in in the work that they're doing as they're kind of looking at Ether and investing more in Ether. Um, and please, if anybody has other information or whatnot, please you know speak up. Um, <clears throat> so it's really just, I guess, those. I wanted to just share those two observations. Plus, you know, there's an email thread right now that I think Wu Jun just did some changes in SD RAN to kind of stabilize it. So, it, you know, we've never really released version 1.5, but all the code changes are in there, and it's supposedly kind of up and working right now. And and there, there and there is some you know, kind of new activity around SD RAN. Some you know, some people looking at developing and extending it and whatnot. So, um, I just wanted to share those thoughts. And then. Um, I guess the the meta question is whether SD, you know, if, if there's going to be some more activity here, if, if we should just kind of be tracking SD RAN and SD RAN should sort of come into this meeting as well. Well, yeah, I think it should. It, but how to do that? It requires um, the right people to point to. And and, and if Intel Lab, maybe that's Christian, um, which would be great. Yeah. Okay, you know, so that might be enough for today. You're right; it's the right person. We need an anchor person who can kind of, you know, report on it and and whatnot. And, uh, but if there's a desire to bring it in here, let's at least have that discussion with Christian, and then uh, let's see where it goes. Yep. All right, and then the last point, which has come up, is we need to find a way to include Christian and and or people from the Intel Labs group. Um, I'll I'll take that on and work on it. Yeah, and if you need help creating a poll or something, Larry, you know, speak up, or we could enlist maybe Michelle to to do that. But just okay. throwing it out there, we used to have the 10 a.m. slot, you know, the one hour later than right now, and for some reason we moved it an hour earlier. I don't remember why. Oh, I think it was to better accommodate uh, time zone. Oh, in India and uh, in Europe too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I also remember there was another conflict, but I may be wrong about that. But um, yeah, okay. So I think that maybe um, getting a poll out or whatnot too, but I, I do think getting Christian or a good Intel Labs representation in here is gonna be important. Yeah, I agree. All right, most of the hour taken, anything else? Thanks. Um...
for filling out the uh, the details there, Anonymous Panda, whoever you are. All right, well, thanks everybody. Um, I will be traveling next week, but uh, unless uh, you hear of, uh, otherwise, assume the meeting happens and someone else takes the lead. All right, thanks everyone, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.